And we are live, A Up Internet, and welcome to uh, this evening's uh, discussion. We're talking about the Phantom Menace, and we're talking about everything that we think is right and everything that we think is wrong uh, with the Phantom Menace. And uh, I'm joined by Luciano and uh, Straw Man Atheist, the now tattered atheist. Good evening. Yeah, don't worry about straw man. I'm the more important atheist. <laughs> <laughs> Already starting a flame war. Oh my goodness. Well, I'd like to point out there's no disagreement so far. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what up, straw man? How are you doing? Am I straw manning you over here? Punerific. Hardy har har. That's very punerific. <laughs> it is. Uh, how you guys doing? Am I just getting here on like on the nick of time? Yes, which is good because in a little bit I'm gonna have to leave for a few minutes, but I'll be right back. So uh, all right. Cool. So but we'll start off with you know everything that we liked about the Phantom Menace. Um Luciano, do you wanna go first? Sure. So as someone raised on the prequels, I I know that at least two of the people here were raised on the prequels as opposed to the original trilogy. I think that it was a neat introduction that was designed very much for children. It was definitely designed for a younger audience than even the original Star Wars trilogy was. And I think it did a very good job of giving people characters that they would want to see more of, with the exception of a couple of people that we've discussed in private and that we're undoubtedly going to touch on when we get to the negatives of this. Okay. Um, what, what were your favorite parts of the film? So I very much liked the scene against Darth Maul. And like, okay, I'm going to be right back. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> okay, straw man. What what are your um what are the good things about the phantom menace see i don't see it as much as children like he was saying but i see more of there's some more lore elements to it and i really like that I, i'm really big of a lore fanatic so oh, oh. oh. what's happening okay. i don't know but when it started getting into okay the it started talking about the rule of two, uh, Darth Maul, and then when he pulls out that double-bladed lightsaber, ah, oh. yeah, I never understood the the rule of two. That was never really explained. Why there's, is it that only there's only rule of two because um, Sith are very good at infighting, and that they only want two because then there will only be two that could possibly fight. Like any time there was like a massive amount of Sith. We always killed the shit out of each other, like in like a week. Oh, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they're they're not good playing nice together. Yeah, it's an expanded universe thing. Uh, Darth yeah, Bane and Darth Zana instituted the rule of two. Yeah, but before them, there was like the Sith uh, Empire. Yeah, what was that guy with a fucking skull on his skull? Um, Darth Nihilum. Yeah, the guy right before Bane, the guy who Bane actually killed, and then instituted the rule of two. Um, yeah, yeah, Darth Nihilus had a Sith Academy. Yeah, there was an ass ton of them, and they would always invade the Jedi planet and try to kill all of them. And then, if they're not doing that, they're killing each other. Okay. Yep. And um, the answer to uh, your question, on my answer, which you rudely asked me last, um, was that uh, Darth Maul. Because you're Darth late. Maul. It wasn't that late. <laughs> So, uh, oh, was epic. oh shit, there's a person on camera. <laughs> I don't know why my my camera turned on. I was trying to turn off my microphone and my camera turned on. I yeah, haven't talked yeah. back. Sorry about that, guys. I hope you I hope you weren't trying to keep your face off the internet. Cause... No, my videos, most of my videos actually have my face. My camera isn't working. So I can't like record videos in my face now. But lots of my videos have my face in them. Oh, okay. I, I was really going to finish that up with, now your face is on the internet for the four people 
from Black Sofa to watch. Yeah, everyone, everyone on the stream now knows my secret identity. I'm an I annoying three-year-old. Um, but uh, so uh, I'm sorry for the dick. <laughs> tatted. Um, what what what's your favorite part? What are your favorite parts of the film? Um, like uh, old boy stole from me. I was gonna say uh, the the scene with Darth Maul versus uh, Obi Wan Kenobi and uh, and uh, what's his name? Qui Gon Jin. Those were uh, probably my my favorite scenes. Um, I also didn't mind the scene when they're underwater with that that like scuba thing. If you could delete Jar Jar from it, but like that stuff was really cool. Oh. Dude, that underwater like stuff. Jar Jar? <laughs> um, Django wasn't in it at all, was he? No, no he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Yeah, uh, that and finding out that there's some creatures that are in indispensable to. Uh, to uh, the Jedi mind tricks, which you know is something that you know you didn't hear anything about in the first three films. Well, in Return of the Jedi, uh, Jabba was immune to it. Yeah. Oh fuck! I forgot about that. So yeah, this hinted. Oh, wait, at wait, me. wait! No, in the first one that I watched, no, he wasn't. In Return of the Jedi, was what the first one? No, that's new. Oh, uh, my, sorry. Wait, the last. Sorry. One. Sorry. Yeah, last my bad. One. Trilogy. My bad, because when, when the I keep on forgetting because uh, in new in the New Hope, the first time I watched it, Jabba wasn't in it at all. No, he wasn't. No, yeah, they had to add that in later. Yeah, but in Return of the Jedi, you see that he's immune to the the mind trick. Yeah, he's does that thing. <laughs> exactly, and that was, a, um, that was a pretty good impersonation. And and, and, and of course, in the Phantom Menace, it's explained that um, the only language that that um, people understand on Tatooine is money. Is the, is the language of money. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, I think my favorite part, one of my favorite parts in the Phantom Menace, is. That first um, time we that first um, lightsaber battle between the three of them on the on the desert on the on Tatooine when we, when we when we see Darth Maul um, fight for the first time. Oh yeah, that was where he comes speeding up on that uh, little scooter speeder. Yeah, oh, the one that you see for like two seconds, and they made awesome toys of it, and then you realize that they didn't use it like at all. Yeah, because I had the toy of that. I freaking love that thing. All right, and um, so any any more any more favorite scenes or any anything more that they got right? Do you, you know? Do you guys think? Did anyone already say the pod racing? Because I actually legitimately liked the, the pod racing. It wasn't the best thing ever, but it was neat. I liked it. The only issue was Sebulba's pod racer. Dun, 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 that annoyed the hell out of me. <laughs> That's yeah, understandable. Yeah. It, it made a lot of good video games. I got to give that to it. Um, but yeah, in, in the movie, I didn't like it that much. I did like the games, though. Yeah. Anyone else play the 64 and 64 pod racer? I did. Yeah, that thing was awesome. And they even had one for the little uh, Game Boy. Game Boy Color. Oh, that was oh, pretty man. awesome, dude. And he, he, it was one of those ones with um, the like rumble pack on top of the Game Boy on the cartridge itself that you could put a double, triple A in it. And then if you hit the wall, it would shake. Oh, right. But then okay. if you hit too much, it would actually unplug the fucking cartridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hashtag um, first world problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is it, isn't it? Um. So, Strawman, let's start with you. What what was wrong, you know, for, as far as you're concerned, with the Phantom Menace? Midi fucking Chlorians. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my god! I don't that understand the why they try to do that. That is the dumbest idea I had ever heard. Mm -hmm. It takes 
it takes the force from this mystic, powerful energy to, oh, yeah, it's something that we have no control over. It's just these little parasites that can do it for us. <laughs> that, and I think they watched, like, Dragon Ball Z one time, and they couldn't figure out why Vegeta was looking at the thing through his fucking head. And I'm just like, oh, okay, maybe that's what we should go with. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Power 6,000! The scooter. <laughs> that was the fucking... scooter says it's over 6,000! Yeah, that was... It was, was pretty fucking bad. I, I did like the fact that the... the uh, originally didn't want to train Anakin because of his age. And yeah. Like, like... The, 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 everyone kept on going, why? He's really young. I was like, he's so goddamn attached to his mom. Like, they want those... Those kids, and when they're like almost infants, yeah. And the, 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 you know, the thing about the Metaclorians is that why on earth, if they wanted to find out the the identity of the Phantom Menace, you know, or the you know the Sith Lord, just do a, a blood test on everyone, then and then find out who's got the most Metaclorians. Well, <laughs> there you go. Well, the, the 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 secret behind that is you can a lot of the Jedi could sense the force within people, which was then game became metachlorians and the way that um uh, Palpatine kept on escaping that shit is because he was so goddamn strong with it, he just suppressed it. Oh. So you guys so you guys could like he's around Jedi all the time. He should have been able to sense him, but he was just like nah. I'm I'm good. I'm I'm not showing you guys who I am. He was pretty badass. Yeah. Very likable. <laughs> what he was yeah. What'd he do? All right. Hey guys, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna take my dog for a walk. I'll be back in like two minutes. Okay. So it's just you and you and me, straw man. Yeah. Whatever whatever um what else did they get wrong? Also here. Oh, Luciano's oh, here too. Right. He just had his mic off. But uh, Jar Jar, please, why? Oh, God. If he just had a better <laughs> accent, that's all it would have took. <laughs> yeah. But but no, it had to be this mangled sort of Jamaican with brain damage accent. I'm like, why? He's not funny. No. South Park. South Park did an episode based around a character like Jar Jar, and it was absolutely horrible for the right <laughs> for the right reason. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah, I think the scene where he treads in dog shit, or <laughs> I think that you know sums up the entire film for me. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and um. Uh, I mean the gun, the the, the it, what, what are they called? The gun guns, a whole gun gun race uh, are superfluous. Um, and I didn't understand what I didn't understand were when Obi Wan and Qui Gon Jinn they go into they go into the ocean, and they they find this hit you know the hidden gun gun you know city. And Obi Wan says to the king or whatever, he says, "What happens to the Naboo, you know, affects you as well. You have a symbiotic relationship." Uh, I was thinking, really? How? They're completely separate to each other. the The Gun Guns live in this hidden city underwater, and the Naboo live. On land, so how, you know, how, you know, in Yoda's name, do they have a symbiotic relationship? I didn't get that. I didn't. I didn't get it either. I'm like, they are hiding underwater. They, the Naboo, have almost no contact with them. They had to send scouts to even figure out if they still existed. Yeah. To find the Gungan swamps and stuff like that, because they didn't even know if they still existed. So it's kind of obvious they don't have any contact. How there there need to be an explanation. Like, do they mine something? Are they fishermen and they sell to the Nebu? Or 
something like that. That that could have helped. Just a little lore element, or just leave the entire phrase out of there and leave the characters out. Yeah, and and also I I could have sworn Naboo was the name of the planet, not the not not a specific people group on that planet. It it, it was. It, it is the name of the planet, but the humans always, whenever they name the planet, they took the name for themselves or whatever. Oh, I see. Okay. Also, um, what I hated about the Phantom Menace is that the first half hour is all about you know, um, the trade, you know, the trade deal and taxes, and it's boring as fuck. It's politics. Yeah. And what the, you know, what business do, do um, Jedi Knights have with a trade dispute? Yeah, they're not, I mean, it even mentions it in the Clone Wars. They're not even soldiers. Why are they sending them? Are they supposed to be intimidating? I mean. I don't, I don't, I didn't understand that at all. The whole, thematically, the whole purpose of the first trilogy was to show like what happened to make a republic or like a space republic i guess go from that to like whatever weird almost fascistic government the empire is supposed to represent and like it's definitely boring like i agree with your criticisms completely i'm not saying this in defense of it i'm i'm just saying that like it was supposed to establish what the galaxy was like before the fourth, fifth, and sixth movies. Yeah. Um, but. So, yeah, I just, um, I just thought it was, it was really, it was a really boring start to the, you know, to the movie, I thought. You know, the, this whole thing about the trade dispute. Hey, he's back. Yeah, I'm back. We're talking about t- trade disputes? Yeah. And how uh, you know how you know how the first half an hour or so of the movie was all about trade dispute and taxes and goddamn Chinese. Yeah, what the fuck? It you know what a boring start to to any movie. I, I didn't. I just didn't like it at all. Well, the only reason it was interesting is because you got Jedi's on board the ship. They're doing Jedi shit. And like he was cutting through the blast doors, Qui Gon just <laughs> and like, oh no, he's getting through. Yeah, yeah he's gonna fuck you up. Yeah, and if it wasn't for the droidicas, he would have. I forgot about them. The droidicas were awesome. Oh yeah, the roly poly son bitches. But yeah. there's only two of them though. Uh, They're supposed to be uh, droid killing soldiers though, so like it was supposed to be an experiment. And everyone's all like, oh, no, they're super frightening and they're super strong. They're not, but it's fun to pretend that they are. <laughs> Wait, Jordicos are supposed to be anti-droids? They're supposed to be, like, droid killing. I'm going to I'm gonna look it up just to be sure, but I'm pretty sure their whole purpose was to be, like, Jedi killing soldiers. They were, like, they were supposed to be able to face off against almost anyone. So, yeah. Yeah, they were uh, designed. There's, It's another species that was in the uh, Confederacy. Great I can't remember what they were. I can't remember what they were called, but you don't ever see them in the movie. But they do the same thing. They roll up and roll around like that. That's how they move. And they built those to hold off the Trade Federation, and the Trade Federation took them. Okay. Can we. Sounds about right. Yeah. Can, can we talk about Queen Evadala? That was weird. That, that was the weirdest part, like... Hey, that's not me. This is me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's supposed to be using a body double, yet she goes into the dangerous spot. Yes. And, yeah, um... and, and Natalie Portman was a terrible bad man. Yeah. I hate she, 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 for, for me... Queen Amidala slash Padme had no real character whatsoever. She was boring. Oh, yeah, super bland. 
And she yeah. kept on saying, you know what? Screw the Jedi. Screw the Jedi. And then he goes, I'm screwing the Jedi. So I'm like, oh, I don't love you anymore. <laughs> it's like, God damn, dude. Uh, what the fuck are you doing to this guy? When... You know when the you know when um, that soldier said to Qui Gon Jinn, um, it would please the Queen, um, for her handmaiden to yeah, come with you. Oh, I, I said I, if I was Qui Gon Jinn, I said, no, that's not going to happen. I'm in charge here. Um, I don't care if it pleases the Queen. Uh, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> She's not coming. She, she's not coming. End of. Yeah. And then they want to listen. And fuck you, Spooky. That's not very nice. <laughs> but and no, she, she was you know like you say she was just she was bland as fuck. No, she was super fucking bland. I, and and to be fair, I don't know if it was either the writing or if it was um, Natalie Portman just being a terrible actress. I think it was the writing because she got better in two. Yeah, but then she got terrible in three. That's exactly what I was about to say. It really well, sucks that like she has this one super kick-ass scene, and like she's pretty cool throughout all of number two. But like towards the end, you almost think of her as like an actual character who's like worth paying attention to, and then number three, she's just the worst. She's like back to number one, motherfucker, and she's, it's it's <laughs> it, it's it's. She's so inconsistent, so I, I honestly don't think it was a writing. I honestly think that she pulled one out of her ass, and then the other two is her normalness. Yes. Yeah. I, th- I think th- two was um, exception to the rule, and one and three are the rule. I think it was her. Yeah. I mean, even, but even in three, even Obi-Wan was bad. Yeah. I no no no. I don't think Obi Wan was bad in three. He had all those Grievous scenes, and Grievous is awesome. Uh, okay, the Grievous scenes are great because he does. He's a. That's like ninety percent of his movie. He was with Grievous. Okay, look at that. The high ground scene. Come on. That was still pretty interesting, but that was just because Anakin is such a whiny bitch. <laughs> I don't blame that at all. And apparently that follows Descendants because, you know, Kylo is the biggest whining bitch. So Luke is the only... I guess it skips generations. Yeah, I guess. But even Luke was a bit whiny. At the beginning, but he was whiny because he wanted to get involved more. Where the other two are just whiny because it's the sake of wine. Yeah, I, 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 I don't get those two. It's like, I'm powerful, but no one likes me. <laughs> And then you got fucking Kylo going. Yeah, Kylo My dad was a bitch. I don't know. Kylo was, Ky- Kylo was an emo bitch. Oh, yeah. He's a crybaby. He's, I'm not as powerful as my grandfather. <laughs> and uh, his grandfather is just like, they won't let me in their club. Um, <laughs> you sound like Ernie from Sesame Street. That's what I was going for, actually. So he nailed it. Perfect. Then yes, I'm, I'm. I what I want to do is I want to get Grievous tattooed on my back shoulder. I'm okay. just, I'm just trying to like, okay. If anyone's seen my tattoos, left side is is uh like the bad side, and right side's the good side. So my right side, I have Boba Fett on my front of my arm, and I have R two D two on my right side. I want to get Grievous on my left shoulder, back part of my shoulder. I just don't know who from the original three trilogy. Or not the original three, but three booted trilogy that I want to get from the good side. Hmm. So if okay. anyone could point some people out, I can take a look and see how, who I want to get. Poe. How about R4? Poe is not among the fucking new three reboot. Not Poe Darmian. <laughs> and I don't want to get another droid. I won't get like uh-huh. a kick. I, I was thinking maybe Polo Kuhn, if anyone knows who that is. Oh yeah. He was he was the coolest. He's the, the, the yellow face guy with fucking black shit on all over his face. Black shit. And it's uh it's like um like a breathing apparatus type thing, like uh I'll send you a picture. 
Oh, yeah, he's, got, he's got like the respirator thing or whatever. He's 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 really weird looking. I know that. Okay. Yeah, he, he's to... super weird looking and super tough. Like he had his arm broken at one point in time and still fought off a couple of Sith. Like okay. quasi Sith actually. Uh, yeah. Back to episode one. What 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 do people what do people think of of um of of Anakin, Yan Yan Anakin? Well, he's in prison right now. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a meth head right now. So. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't look much better than he did when he was a kid, though. Yeah. They should have got somebody older. More. I know they were supposed to be about the same age, but he just looked way too young. Yeah. He. That, that's what I don't understand. He was at least five years younger than Padme. I think the actors oh, were yeah. actually like two years apart, but he was just a little kid. Like, he just yeah. looked young. Hey, I, I just... Why did they? Why did they want to make him like Jesus? I don't get that. I don't think he was a virgin birth, was he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was a virgin birth. Fuck, I missed that. And a lot of that stuff, like when they started going into like super dumb bullshit, I just kind of ignored it. But goddamn, I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, um, I ruined my day. Thanks for that. I, I don't know. I guess they wanted him to be a Christ-like figure for some reason. Yeah, he was the pro, he was the pro, prophesied uh, chosen one. Was so, he though? Because we know now that they they misinterpreted the prophecy. It wasn't Anakin. It was Luke who was the chosen one. I know lots of people who interpret the prophecy as like the Jedi were getting too big for their bridges and Luke, both Luke and Anakin fulfilled the prophecy at various points in time. Very, con very consistent with that prophecy fulfillment though. <laughs> so <damn>. true. <laughs> I, I agree. I think it's a dumb interpretation of the fantasy or of the prophecy but it's definitely one that lots of people have yeah definitely. i think it would have made a lot more sense if they were both like teenagers yes like if she if like he was a little bit older than her and like was and it would have made a lot more sense his fall would have made a lot more sense and he would have been yeah, exactly. I, 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 in my opinion, we could have done without episode one. Episode one could have been summarized in the in the spiel, you know, that you see at the beginning. You know that you know that it could have been summarized in the spiel at the beginning, and then episode two could have been episode one. And because um, I think they should have made more of. Of um, An Anakin turning to the dark side, he, he should have been a human for a lot longer um, as Darth Vader before he gradually, um, you know, needed the suit. You know, <laughs> the Vader yeah. suit. Yeah, like the first thing that happened, he gets turned into. He basically gets turned to the robot Vader. I mean, well, it would have been he, it would have been cool if he had. He does get his ass kicked pretty hard. Yeah, but I mean, come on. He if he had been like, like if number two had been the Clone Wars, number three had been Revenge of the Sith, but it had not been as fast paced, and they number three three had been him hunting Jedi or whatever. That would have been a lot cooler. Yeah, yeah. but that, that, like he he didn't like he did have a robot part before he became Darth Vader. He had the yeah. robot arm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, but. He, he's he, he's pretty dumb, so you know. And you could have made the relationship with Padme less teen, angsty. Well, it and, would be because you gotta hide it. It's like it's like like the quintessential teen angst where you're like, my dad doesn't like him. He's a bad boy or some shit, and then <laughs> you have the date behind closed doors. They, they could have made it. They could have made it even worse, where it was just a one-off. 
Mm-hmm. It happened. But just kind of gets up in the guts and I'm pregnant. Well, why? Well, what I another thing that I didn't understand about you know going back to Padme, why did why did they need her signature to make their invasion on Naboo legal? I don't. I didn't quite get that. Oh, I, what I think it was was just she wasn't. She was signing it saying they aren't invading. They are just our buddies, essentially. They're they're doing a legal tax thing or whatever, something like that. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't because it wasn't the like they're almost like that signature would be ignoring the invasion completely, pretending it's not happening. Type thing. Yeah. Okay. It just wasn't very well written. No, it wasn't. George George Lucas got a little worse after his wife left him. Yeah. Like I, I think she was a lot of the creative force behind it. Well, everybody oh. said that before. Like he needed to like contract her to clean up the script. Cause... Yeah. Well, unfortunately, he didn't. He picked a lot of good actors though to like do the the roles that they did. Like the guy he picked to do uh, Obi Wan was amazing. The guy he did to pick uh, to do um, Qui Gon was awesome. Oh, Darth Liam Neeson is always awesome. The Qui Gon Jin or not um, the Darth Maul guy, super awesome. Darth Maul was probably the coolest looking Sith. character. Uh, he wasn't on there enough though. Which which uh which X Men does he play? Oh, oh the the frog, Toad. Um, yeah, he he's close he, Toad. The Toad, yeah. And he's also in GI Joe. Is he? Who is he in that one? Snake Eyes or whoever the ninja is. Oh, oh, oh right, okay. It should have been easy. In the extended universe, they tried to like they recognize that they did Darth Maul dirty after introducing him and then just sort of like dispatching him with basically no grace. So he's, he's like a major character in he's not like a major character in some of the video games, but he's a playable character in a whole bunch of video games. He's, he's a, a major character in Rebels. Yeah, he's a major character in the later half of Rebels. But that's like the first time that he's like a major character, and then they actually kill him in Rebels, don't they? They like um, give him like a real ending. Yeah, the, he he gets killed by um uh, by uh, Darth Sidious. By does he? I thought it was by um Obi Wan. He I thought he had a final clash in the desert, and then no, he I just don't, like. I don't think, I don't think I it's, it's no. I, I guess I guess he got away from the city because I remember I'm having some echo, but um. I remember he uh, he took over the Mandalorian city, the planet. Yeah. And then Sidious came up. Oh yeah, and Sidious only killed her with his brother, and kept yeah. him alive for some weird fucking reason. Yeah. Then he does get killed by Obi Wan. Yeah. He gets right. killed by Obi Wan in the desert. Like he comes across like Luke's family, and there's yeah. like a final fight that. that ends like the exact same way that he killed Qui Gon, except for he's on the receiving end. It was really neat. Hmm. Yeah, he has an interesting storyline. Plus, his brother was badass too. Yeah, I mean, his brother's name is Savage, so <laughs> yeah, he, was, he was just a exactly. If you thought Darth Maul wasn't tactful, you'd see his brother. He's a big brute. Hmm. Yeah. So what? I just, what? I what? Can't what, what I, she was a virgin. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um. When Qui Gon asked his mother, you know, who the father is, he, you know, she said, you know, I, there, there was no father. I just became pregnant. Oh, uh, so in the, the words of the late great Christopher Hitchens, what do you think is more possible, that he is the son of the prophet, or that a Tatooine girl could tell a fib? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a Jewish girl. <laughs> I'm sitting now. Um, that was good. Yeah, thank you. That worked. But, but I know Expanded Universe, they were saying that Plagueis created him. It was kind of hinted at it in three. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. 
that he's part people with no nose? That know that uh, Plagueis ma had manipulated uh, his mother's body or whatever using like the force to create. Yeah. Oh, like his like his last dish effort to kill Sidious. No, it was his. It was his effort to fulfill the prophecy, but to do it in a bad way. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Well, another thing. How? That bugged me about. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, you yeah, know, another thing that bugged me about um, the Phantom Menace was the whole um, convoluted, um, uh, get, you know, get, you know, gamble that um, Qui Gon did with um, Anakin's master and uh, what's his name? Um, it was. Um, oh fuck! It was, really, it was really unnecessarily, you know, complicated. It needn't have been. But did anyone follow that plan? You know, that plan. He kept making bets, and they kept getting more and more ludicrous. He just, if he had stayed with the first one, it would have worked just fine. Yeah. Well, he had he had to he had to get the kid. The last bet he made was for uh, the child. So he yeah. had to make the last bet. So the last bet was like the most important, I think. But it was like, um, well, I, I won this pod racer, but in a game of chance. And uh, I, I'm going to bet on, you know, your boy winning... And if he loses, you get to keep our ship, and and you get to keep the boy. But if we win, we get to take the boy with us, and you get to keep the pod racer and you fix our race. ship. Yeah. And His original bet was that um that he would keep the pod. He would get the ship fixed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Okay. And then he's got an add and shit to it. So then he eventually would get the, the last bet he made was for the kid. And the, the, the guy threw the chance cube. And if you were going to get the red, it would be the, the mom. Blue would be the kid. And uh, it landed on right about a land on red. And then uh, Qui Gon did the thing, the force push, and made it blue. Yeah. yeah. Jedi are not above lying and cheating. Exactly. No. <laughs> yeah. These aren't the droids you're looking for. <laughs> they they're, were they're the all... droids they were looking for, though. It'd be, it's the funny thing is, like, I've seen the thing, like, there's a, uh, there's like a fan fiction I read where the stormtrooper wasn't even affected by it. He just went with it. Yeah. Because yeah. it was like his first duty posting or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Or, yeah. or yeah, or you get the the stormtrooper scene in that same movie where he accidentally hits his head in the fucking uh, door, and then George <laughs> Lucas in the DVD version out of the donk noise. Yeah, that was actually kind of funny. I liked that one. It was. It was a good time. Um, is, Thor, is Sigourney Weaver hot? No. Or, or was Sigourney Weaver hot? I don't mean currently. She's a thousand now. <laughs> she she was hot in her day. I well, I thought she was anyway. I thought she was hot too, man. She was one of my two um, uh, Hollywood crushes when I was a child. It was her and uh, Princess Leia. Oh so, right. The first time I saw Alien, I was just like, she's old. So. Oh my god, you're an uncultured fuck. <laughs> I just didn't find her attractive. Oh, well, that's because you're wrong. She was All too right. skinny. Still wrong. <laughs> she was hot in Ghostbusters. Oh my okay, god, her and god. Was, she was, she was actually. God, I fucking love Sigourney Weaver. And plus, she, you know, she was awesome. God, I hate the fact that you said she wasn't hot. Freaking goddamn alien. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies. The most disturbing thing was Alien Three. All the weird, messed up ones. Alien Resurrection was worse. Yeah. There's that one that was like, Mommy. I was like, Holy fuck. 
kill me. And and Hellboy was in it. Yeah. No, I've never seen dude's name is. movies. You what? What'd you say? I've never seen any of the alien movies. I've seen mm. I've seen the Predator one where like a what whole bunch. What the of fuck things. is wrong with you? I was raised alien. in Central America. So you were raised where? Under Central a rock. America. In Central America, so. Well, that's why we're building the wall because you guys don't watch aliens. But wait, I thought it was because we're like human versions of the aliens, and also we're, you know about we're like we're both we're both Puerto Rican, right? I remember you mentioning in one of your videos that, you, or not one of your videos, in one of your tweets that you're like half Puerto Rican. Quarter. Mm. Yeah, my grandma is straight from Puerto Rico. Rico. So what? I'm just straight Puerto Rican. You don't sound very straight. I. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. You can't softball that shit in there. God it's damn it. Amazing. <laughs> Tad it is an a asshole. I, I, I was about to say, about to say atheist hole, but asshole. <laughs> atheist are, hole. Are, you can be both. Okay, don't try to pigeonhole him. Yeah, I'm I'm both. I'm both. But uh yeah, I'm I'm quarter Puerto Rican. My grandmother came here from Puerto Rico, which to be honest, she moved from state to state essentially. Um and everything else is Irish. Nice. So I like beans, potatoes, stabbing people, and drinking. <laughs> and also hurricane. Can't forget that last part. Oh, you mean never restoring power after hurricane and taking yeah. Elon Musk to do yeah. it for a hospital? I mean, yeah, that is that is Puerto Rico. Not by choice, mind you, but yeah, still Puerto I, Rico. Yeah, it's pretty fucking depressing. It is. That's why people don't pay attention to it. Doesn't we make have, coverage. We had the Miranda guy though. Yeah. The old boy from uh Hamilton. We also have Gina Rodriguez from Jane the Virgin, so that's neat. I don't know what that is. That's cool. That's interesting. So back to the Phantom Menace. <laughs> we don't want to talk about Puerto Rico anymore. You oh, fucking oh, so racist. Like, talking talking about aliens and Sigourney Weaver is cool, but not Puerto Rico. I see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, is it because Britain never controlled Puerto Rico? That's it. That's oh, it right that's there. It. It's his imperial. It's his closet imperialism. Oh yeah, but you. you the sun's gonna set on the British Empire. God damn it! You got this is the new Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> But um, uh, what, what, what else went wrong with the Phantom Menace? Not enough Puerto Ricans. Okay, not enough Puerto Ricans. <laughs> that's, that's the problem with every movie. Not enough Puerto Ricans. <laughs> God damn it. Um, uh, Jar Jar Binks is the fucking worst. Uh, I, I wanted him to die. I wanted him to die so many times. The fact that, he, the, that he's the worst is the fact that he survived the whole movie. That was that was the real problem. No, he's still <laughs> alive, according to like. He's stuff not. Now. He's not alive anymore. Didn't he like become a senator for Naboo? He did, oh, and yeah. he's he's he the did. one that signed the order uh, to make um, Palpatine the Galactic uh, Overlord or whatever the fuck that was. Yeah, yeah. but in the original he, before, before he's Disney not bought alive. it, oh, before yeah. Disney bought it. He was uh, on uh, Alderaan when it exploded. Now, he lives on Naboo as a poor beggar, still alive. No, he's not alive. He's not? No, J.J. Abrams put his fucking skeleton in the movie. <laughs> Which one? Where, Which where movie? Episode uh, 7. The, first, the, one, the only one J.J. Abrams did. That's I why all the other ones suck balls. I didn't see it. Bro. I better look that up right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he said he did it. I just, I just took him on faith. <laughs> in, in JJ Abrams, we trust. I can prove he exists. Yes. <laughs> and like you can like poke him in the face and everything. I'm pretty sure he hates when you do that, but he can. Yeah. I'm looking this up. He said he was uh, going to. This is, look, this is a skeptical. This is a skeptical live stream. We need evidence, guys. You need yes. evidence. <laughs> You're right, I do need evidence. You're fake news. Or, or do you not trust... Wall. Wait, do you find my lack of faith disturbing? Wall. That's <laughs> how that that work? Is the wall going to be underwater? How does that even work? Yes. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna build a wall to keep out the Mexicans, and then we're gonna build a wall on the north to keep out the snow Mexicans, and then we're gonna build a wall on the top <laughs> to keep out the alien Mexicans. I'm gonna build That's a little space for us. So we're just you building know, a dome. Yeah, we're building a dome. <laughs> no, te- technically, if you ask Mike Pence, we're building a firmament. <laughs> <laughs> I bet this was not the direction this this live stream was supposed to go in. No, it wasn't. But this is why you invite me because I derail the shit out of it. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Um, well, another thing that I really got on my nerves about you know was the way um, Anakin he just bumbled his way you know into this the what what you know this ship. And he, oh, let's do, let's um, turn upside down. That's a neat trick. And he kind of accidentally saved the day somehow. It, it, it was just clumsy writing, I, I thought. My, my, this here Anakin guy. That's all I can remember. God, I really <laughs> wish you would stop because now that's getting close to being stuck in my head. God, I hate you, Weird Al. <laughs> I do that. That was a pretty good movie. That was decent. Like, you know, I'd rather watch that one than episode eight. So I like, I like, like at least episode one has like some redeeming qualities. Like you, you got to see R2 D2 be fucking badass for the first time and realize why people fucking like him. <laughs> um, uh, and then you got um, what you got Darth Maul who's super fucking cool. You got like so many cool things. It has so many redeeming qualities. And, and you, you got to see, see a lot bunch of, of cool Jedi's powers. Yeah, and you got to see a lot of Jedi's and Force power. Like that's why I like Episode Two so much because you got to see the the fight with the clones and the droids and the Jedi. I was like, fuck yeah, we got finally get to see Jedi's do Jedi things. Hey guys, you're never gonna believe this. Jar Jar was played by a black guy. I knew it. Everyone knew it. He was quintessentially like racist Jamaican. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that, shall we talk about the racism in in episode one? Um, the Nemoidians were Japanese. Yes, exactly. And it was the who? The Trade Federation. They were Japanese. Oh, they were Japanese as fuck. It was mm-hmm. just. It, it, they they, didn't even, they try even to hide it. They even spoke that English. Oh, they got away. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, exactly. no. No, yes. they will not be able to order the number five and number five. Kung Pao <laughs> chicken sauce. I think well, I went racist Chinese instead of Japanese. It reminded me of the... Samurai. What's, the, what's the guy from... Uh, I'm trying to remember the, the movie. Is it Breakfast at Tiffany's that has the Chinese oh, guy? Yeah. Oh, God. God, you are so white. Oh my God, bringing up fucking breakfast at Tiffany's. I've never actually <laughs> seen it. Other than I've never seen it either. The only reason I know what it is is because of the fucking song. I've seen it. I, I've seen the film. I've seen it because it was is top that ten ra- most racist characters of all time. Yes, it was, it was horrible. At Tiffany's, there's, a, there's a something we got. And I something something breakfast at Tiffany's something. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a good singer, but I don't remember half the words. So that makes it worse. <laughs> you know song I'm about? I, I'll just I'll I'm gonna make sure now to send you the entire Weird Al the saga begins. Um, I'm gonna make sure to uh, delete that message. <laughs> um, so. Any final thoughts about the Phantom Menace? How how would we have done things differently? How fucking cool is it that ET's in it? Oh yes, somebody mentioned that in the chat. Yeah, I, I, I haven't been reading the chat, but ET's fucking in it, and that's fucking awesome. Yeah, and you, technically Yoda's in in ET, so that's cool. And then them two playing nice together. Yeah, I guess um, you have to watch it. I had to watch it a few times before I noticed DT, but yeah, that's pretty 
Oh, Spooky Bed Hair is saying, yeah, Mickey Rooney was the um, roast, you know, racist um, Chinese character. Um, but that's just uh, an aside. <laughs> <laughs> I know, maybe. Um, God damn it, Frustrator, why are you helping him? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bad frustrated. That's a very bad rush frustrated. That's why no one likes you when you're not but still stream. Good pig. So bad pig. Uh, who got who got done the most dirty out of all the characters in the Phantom Menace? Qui-Gon. I, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say Darth Maul because he was interesting and got killed. I think I think both of them got done dirty. Really sucks that both of them like the movie did. Did you guys hear that? Did. did you guys hear that? What? Oh, you guys didn't hear me fart in the stream? <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> no, yeah. um, no, uh, no. I think the most dirty was probably the old, um, the fucking flying motherfucker who wanted to keep the boy. <laughs> that's a, that's <laughs> auto. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with that. Jedi don't give a fuck. They'll cheat and steal or whatever. Yeah. I'm surprised, I'm surprised honestly, he just didn't kill the guy and take the shit. <laughs> it would have been a lot quicker. Yeah. It would have been a lot more interesting. Yes. And that could have been how Anakin found out about the Jedi. Oh, this guy killed my slave owner. I've got to thank him. Yes. <laughs> and then. Um, how what 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 do you think they could have done differently to make it better? Kill Jar Jar. Kill Jar Jar like immediately, like when he bends over and Hi, the... I'm a Jar Jar. <laughs> <laughs> he could have had an underwater battle to like give the Gungans actual reasons to want to support the people of Naboo instead of And then the... he could have brought that green motherfucking Jedi out. Yeah, yeah that would have been good. I strongly agree with that. We've never seen him do that shit. And then he got yeah. murdered. Yeah. I'm trying to... Kit Fisto. Yeah, sir. that's it. Kit God, how the fuck did you pull that out of Did you Google it? No, I, I'm a nerd, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm a nerd, but god damn, that's impressive. Because he... Like, you literally... You didn't, you didn't know what the fuck those technicals were for at all until, like, the cartoons. And you're like, oh, shit. This dude it's, breathes underwater? Yeah. Squid. <laughs> He's Who knew he was a fucking squid? He just looked like a weird, like, thing. You're like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Well, how he high looks, was George Lucas? He looks like a grown-up version of uh, the little squid alien from Men in Black. You know, the one that, like... Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Except, it, um, except instead of having a body of squid parts, he had a hair full of squid parts. He looked like he was like, um, uh, what the fuck's her name? Um, uh, Greek goddess who turns people into fucking stone. Medusa. Yeah. Medusa's nice stepbrother, brother in law, or brother, half brother, or some shit. Like Medusa's half brother. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I don't do that. She's kind of a dick. And that's what he looked like to me. And I was like, what the fuck's he do? And then I saw him. I was like, oh shit, he swims. You know, oh, he's he fucking cool. supposed to be a Sith, right? <laughs> No, I did not know his name, so my limited knowledge of Kid Fisto is very limited. <laughs> he wasn't yeah, very he was, interesting. I mean, Padme, for me, Padme and Anakin needed to be the same age. Yeah, because that was really creepy how one it didn't age at all and one aged 10 years. Yes. And you're like, oh, this is going to meet her. And I was like, oh, fuck, that is... Like, it's, like I always thought, like, like he was trying to date his babysitter type thing, and then they're like, yeah. "Oh no, they're the same age." I'm like, "Oh fuck, no, they're not." Yeah, it kind of they were, yeah they were supposed to be about like a year apart, but he looked eight and she looked fourteen. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was like a, the the guy trying to date his babysitter. Yeah. I actually <laughs> thought that the age difference is more than one year, so I, I learned something new today. Let me make sure. I th in, in story, I think they're supposed to be about the same age. I'm not sure how old they are. Jake Lloyd. I'm going to figure out how old he is. Jake Lloyd is... 
fuck, it's not saying 29. Let's see how old. It would be really funny if this inmate number ended with 29. Inmate 675 29. Snarky's in the chat. What's up, white person? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Natalie Portman is 37. Oh, holy <sighs> fuck. Yeah, you're not even remotely close there, Honky. It's but worse than we thought. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it literally uh, is babysitter. Yeah. Yeah. But I know, no, dude. It, I called that. That was really fucking creepy. And then somehow in she In the didn't story, age. they're supposed to be about the same age, though, is the issue. Oh, dude, we're terrible at casting, dude. They yeah, were. definitely. How did that kid get Anakin? I don't know. He he also turned to the dark side, so I guess he was perfect casting. He he what well, wasn't he in um Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh my god, please tell me that's true. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, I'm sure it was the same. Actor. Give me a second, give me a second, Jingle All the Way. I, I I've got Jake Lloyd pulled up when we scroll down. Filmography shit. Filmography Jingle All the Way, Jamie Langston. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god, he looks so goddamn creepy today. Yes. Like like man, if you ah, uh, he looks like he wants to like skin all the puppies. <laughs> Have you seen him lately? Like like his prison is prison uh is a mugshot he's, isn't even that the worst one. Like him with long hair is even creepier. He looks like a unibomber. Oh dear. He, he did not age well. No. <laughs> well, drugs will do that to you. Don't do drugs, kids. Drugs and being in one movie, and then also that on a social network movie that no one remembers you were in. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe he was in Jingle All the Way. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't believe I actually watched Jingle All the Way. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what I'm worried about. You actually watched that movie. Dude, I grew up in the 90s. It was like they were pumping out Christmas movies with everyone in it. And I grew up a little Catholic boy who loved Christmas. And I still love Christmas even though I'm an atheist. Well, Christmas is awesome, honestly. Because Christmas is the tits, and it's amazing. Oh, my God, dude. This, this really fucks me up, the fact that he was in Jingle All the Way. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Here. I, I'm about to share it. This is Jake Lloyd now. Oh yeah, I saw that. I was just like, if I so, if I, oh my gosh, that you is, don't uh, understand wow. Jingle All the Way, motherfucker. Listen, listen. Oh my <laughs> fucking listen. god! I am building that firmament now. God damn it. God, I don't man. think you understand what it was like having Christmases in Colombia, Panama, and Honduras. I did not see these English Christmas movies. I saw yeah, the same because you guys don't have it. presents there. You guys just have sadness. <laughs> Listen, you want to know? You want to know? You want to know the worst part? One of the few Christmas movies I ever watched as a kid was the Santa Claus. So yeah, feel bad. The one with Tim Allen. Whoa. Yes. Oh my god, that's like objectively the worst one. I know. I, like I got to see I got to see a lot of them now, like in the last couple of years. But like no, the as best. a kid, the Santa Claus was pretty much the pinnacle of white people Christmas movies. What was the me. best part of his sleigh? I don't know. The fact that it dispensed cookies. Yes. <laughs> I like it's the hot objective. chocolate. I like no, repress cookies. the memories of that movie. I've seen it, but I can barely remember what happened in it. I remember the second one pretty well, but I do not remember the first. The only reason yeah. I remember the, the, the first one is because that main elf has like been in like a million fucking murder sitcoms on fucking like TNT and FX and shit. Yeah. yeah. He he looks like a serial killer. He does, but he's always like the guy who just like, hey, I'm gonna crunch the numbers for you. And then he finds the bad guy with hacking skills which is really weird i don't know how they would fucking find i guess people are better at computers than i am <laughs> okay we gotta get billy from vader tech to come check that out then <laughs> dive aids 
Okay, on that bombshell. What bombshell? <laughs> I don't know. What did I say? Something rude? <laughs> well, um, well, well, yeah, we'll but we'll end it there. Um, thanks, guys, for, for joining me for this chat about the Phantom Menace. And um, next time we'll we'll talk a, we'll talk about um, episode two, the Clone Wars. Episode two is neat, so that's going to be a fun chat. Oh yeah, objectively the best one of the new trilogy. So, so many video games. So many video games. And, and they didn't the kill all the Jedi. So, so thanks for watching, everyone. And um, if you've liked this video, then Why? do subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss <laughs> another video. Okay. Smash that fucking like button. Smash it. And subscribe.